Now, after understanding that what is second law of thermodynamics and also defining the second law of thermodynamics with the help of KP statement and Clausius statement, now let's come to a topic which is very very important and that is entropy. And entropy is basically you know a very integral part of the second law of thermodynamics and sometimes we also call the second law as the law of entropy. Okay. Now entropy is basically a very very abstract term. With abstract term we mean that it is very difficult to define. Okay. So let's try and understand it in the context of the second law. Okay. Now the second law basically deals with the two kind of processes. The first kind of process is a reversible process and the second one is an irreversible process. Now the entropy is basically linked with the reversible process. Okay. So we study entropy in context with the reversible processes only. Okay. And to define it, you can say in a very simplistic manner, entropy is the amount of disorder, amount of disorder in a system disorder or randomness okay now if you look at the expansion curve uh, let us say if you talk about if you talk about a plot like this okay in this plot if this is temperature and this is entropy okay if we are not talking about isentropic processes where is wherein the entropy remains same. Let us talk about compression and expansion which are not isentropic. Okay. Let us say you have a certain process which is going like this. Okay. Now what is happening? Initially you are at this state that is T1 and the final state is T2. Now the temperature has gone down from T1 to T2. Now temperature goes down, you know, when the gas expands, it, you know, uh, decreases in temperature. Now what happens if you look at the entropy, the entropy has increased from S1 to S2. Now in a very simplistic manner, if you understand this in the, in physical terms, as we told you that amount of disorderness or randomness of the molecules of a system is the entropy. Or is the measure of entropy okay if you look at this at higher temperatures or at higher pressures and if i draw an isobar this is a constant pressure line and this is also a constant pressure line so p1 to p2 so when your pressure drops from p1 to p2 which will give a rise in the volume okay so as the volume increases expansion takes place the randomness of the molecules will increase. On the vice versa part, if you compress the gas, the randomness would decrease. So the entropy would decrease. Okay. So this is a very, very easy uh, method of understanding entropy. Okay. Now let's talk about it in the context of second law. Now we'll be dealing with a lot of heat engines, heat cycles. Okay. If you look at this heat engine, okay, so the amount of work that comes out of a heat engine is not a function of the amount of heat supplied. No, it is a function of or it depends upon the temperature at which the heat is supplied. Okay, so this means that the entropy, we will denote entropy with capital S. So entropy basically depends upon or is a function of heat. Depends upon or let us say is a function of heat. Or I can say it is a function of temperature. Because how much heat is being supplied is dependent upon at what temperature it is being you know, supplied. So we are more concerned with the temperature at which 
the heat is supplied to the engine okay, because you know higher the temperature at which the heat is supplied you have more chances of conversion of this heat into work means your efficiency would be high okay so if you supply heat at a lower temperature you have less chances of that heat to be converted into you know some amount of work from that engine so if you are if you are supplying heat from a very high temperature to this engine the entropy increase would be very very small on the other hand if you are supplying heat to this engine at a very low temperature or comparatively low temperature than the previous case then your entropy change or your entropy increase would be very very high so this uh, you know brings us to a very important observation over here that for maximum conversion of heat into work maximum conversion of heat into work this is associated with minimum entropy change minimum entropy change or entropy rise okay for a minimum amount of conversion of heat into work you you are associating it with maximum entropy change and this is done at high temperature because at high temperatures you have a higher possibility of converting that heat into some amount of work okay and for minimum conversion okay of heat into work this is associated with maximum entropy change okay so this occurs at a comparatively low temperature okay so this is you know a very very important concept that you should understand you know in second law of thermodynamics that is entropy so this is just a very brief introduction to this concept let's take this discussion a bit forward and talk about or you know i would say uh, prove that two reversible adiabatics two reversible adiabatics they cannot ever intersect so let's in the second in, in this uh, next video we'll prove that two reversible adiabatics can never intersect each other let's prove this in the next video and then after that we will take this discussion on entropy forward